Today, we would like to show you a video demonstration on the installation of our new product called Median Voltage Cable Joint Type or CAMSV. CAMSV is a joint body produced by CellPack as the new generation of the usual CAM body. The good thing about CAMSV is that it is more compact in size and less components are used. Before we begin, we would like to remind you that this installation has to be done by a competent jointer. Make sure that all of the necessary personal protective equipment or PPE is ready to be worn or available for immediate use, such as safety helmet, safety gloves, safety shoes or boots, reflector vest and additional first aid kit. Do take care and be aware of your surroundings, such as passerby, vehicles and heavy equipment. Only perform the work when conditions are ideal and it is safe to perform such activities. In the case of heavy rain, it is not advisable to do the work. However, if it is only a drizzle, a canopy or tent can be set up and work can continue to be performed. Do not forget road sign boards and cones to alert traffic. Last but not least, make sure to double check that the cable is not being energized and is completely free of residual current. Safety lock mechanism and danger board must be put in place at the incoming feeder giving electricity supply to the cable to ensure cable will never be energized during the entire jointing process. Before we start to make the joint, let's see what tools we need to prepare in order for us to work on the joint installation. Let's release all of the components from the Camp SV joint packaging box one more time before we start to do the installation. Before we do the Camp SV joint installation, please double check all of the components based on list of components provided. Read carefully the working instruction provided in the kit before starting the installation. Now, we have two cables. Lay down both cables side by side with an overlapping distance of 500 mm. We are going to do cable preparation. For easy reference, we divide the cable into two parts, cable A on one side and cable B on the other side. From the cable end of cable A, make a mark 720 mm on outer sheath. Next, open the outer sheath on that marking area with a cutter. Next, apply the constant force spring RF6 60 mm from the outer sheath cutting edge. Use manual saw to make a cut on the armor. Using a pincer, open the armor. Apply red PVC insulation tape 10 mm from the armor cutting edge. Cut the inner shift of the cable by using the cutter. Spread out all three cable cores gently from each other. Remove the inner filler. Apply red PVC insulation tape at three cable core ends. Remove the water swellable tape on each core until it reaches the inner sheath cutting edge. Take out the copper tape and cut it at the end cut of the inner sheath. Remove the red PVC insulation tape from the three cable core ends. Bend backwards the entire copper wire screen on one cable core 
and bundle them together with red PVC insulation tape. Repeat this step on the other two cable cores. Now we go to cable B. From the cable end of cable B, make a mark 950mm on outer sheath. Next, open the outer sheath on that marking area with a cutter. Next, apply the constant force spring RF6, 60mm from the outer sheath cutting edge. Use manual saw to make a cut on the armour. Using a pincer, open the armour. Apply red PVC insulation tape 10mm from the armour cutting edge. Cut the inner sheath of the cable by using the cutter. Spread out all three cable cores gently from each other, followed by removing the water swellable tape on each core until it reaches the inner sheath cutting edge. Take out the copper tape and cut it at the end cut of the inner sheath. Bend backwards the entire copper wire screen on one cable core and bundle them together with red PVC tape. Repeat this step on the other two cable cores. Bundle the three cable cores together with red PVC tape. 500mm from the cable core end, make a mark. Cut the cable core on the mark with a manual saw and do this also to the other two cable cores. Remove the black semi-conductive paper on each cable core, on cable A. Apply red PVC tape on each core at 165mm from the cable cutting end. Now, let's go back to cable A. At this stage, we will demonstrate the two methods available to remove the outer semiconductive layer. First method, we shall use the red tail file. Apply constant force spring RF3, 30mm from the first applied PVC tape. File the outer semiconductive layer along the circumference of the constant force spring RF3. Followed by longitudinal cut using cutter for three slices of cut. Remove the outer semi-conductive layer with flat nose pliers. Repeat the steps for the other two cable cores. Second method, we shall use the approved semi-conductive removal tool. Put the red part of the tool 30mm from the copper tape cutting edge. Put the black part of the tool beside the red part of the tool. Use the red part of the tool to cut the outer semi-conductive layer around its circumference, followed by longitudinal cut. Remove the outer semi-conductive layer with flat nose pliers. Repeat the steps for the other two cable cores. Measure 75mm from the cable core cutting edge and make a mark on the XLPE insulation surface with a cutter. By using the XLPE insulation peeler, peel off the XLPE insulation from the cable end to the mark. At this stage, we can see the conductor. Cover each conductor end with red insulation PVC tape to protect the sharp edges. Repeat the steps for the other two cable cores on cable A, as well as the three cable cores of cable B. Once done, 
Use the cleaning tissue to wipe and clean the XLPE insulation surface. The cleaning can be extended to the exposed 30mm of the outer semiconductive layer. However, please take note on this step. Only after XLPE insulation surface cleaning can we clean the outer semiconductive layer and not the other way around. And do take care of the cleaning tissue to only use one side for each cable core. Once a cleaning tissue has been used to clean one cable core, the next cable core should use the other side of the cleaning tissue. Once both sides of the cleaning tissue have been used, it has to be disposed. Repeat this step to all of the six cable cores on cable A and cable B. Now that the cable preparation has been done, we shall proceed to the Cam SV installation steps. Firstly, we go to cable A. From the initially applied red PVC tape, measure back 330 mm and apply the cable core with more red PVC tape with 50% overlapping. This is to make the parking area for the joint body at a later step. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores of cable A. Use plastic glove on one hand to apply lubricant GM3 equally on the surface of the XLPE insulation, outer semiconductive layer and the parking area above the red PVC tape. It is advisable that the lubricant is applied one by one at each section without any overlapping between different sections. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores of cable A. Now we go to the joint body. Take out the joint body from the carton box and open the end of the plastic bag. Use a plastic glove on one hand and hold lubricant on the other hand. Apply the lubricant GM3 inside the joint body from both sides while maintaining its horizontal position. Try to push slightly harder so that our finger can reach deeper inside the joint body. Slide the joint body onto cable A until it reaches the centre of the parking area on red PVC tape. Repeat it from the other two cable cores. Lastly, remove the plastic bags from all three joint bodies. Remove the red PVC tape from the end of the conductors on all three cores of cable A followed by cable B. Using a steel brush, gently brush the conductor towards the cable end. Be extremely careful not to let any metallic dust from the conductor land on the XLPE insulation surface. Read the mechanical connector installation manual thoroughly. Place and mount all three mechanical connectors to join a conductor from cable A and cable B. Remove the metal insert from the mechanical connectors prior to the installation for bigger size of conductor. Put the mechanical connector on conductors of cable A and tighten the screw slowly by hand. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores of cable A. Join both cable A and cable B together through the mechanical connectors. Make sure to adjust the position of the mechanical connector to be exactly at the centre between the two conductor lengths from cable A and B. Tighten the screws manually by hand until they are firm. Tighten the screw further using a torque wrench. It is also advisable to use a counter holder on a mechanical connector during the screw tightening to fix its centre and balance position. For the four shear heads on one mechanical connector, Tighten further the outer two shear heads first and then followed by the inner two shear heads. Once further tightened, move again to the outer two shear heads and tighten them again until the shear heads break. Do the same again for the inner two shear heads. Repeat the same steps all over again on the other two cores until we have three solid conductor connections. Clean the mechanical connectors first with tissue for any remaining grease. Further clean them with cleaning tissue and then the XLPE insulation with another side of the cleaning tissue. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores. 
apply lubricant GM3 over all of the surface of the outer semiconductive layer, XLPE insulation and mechanical connector. Apply more lubricant around the border edge of XLPE insulation and outer semiconductive layer, forming a ring on both sides of the cable. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores. Push one joint body to the center of cable joint on top of the mechanical connector so that it is located exactly at the center of the cable joint. Remove the black PVC tape on the joint body. Pull out the plastic tongues from the support rings and out of the joint body one by one by using flat nose plier. Hold the joint body gently by hand while pulling out the plastic tongue to maintain its center position. Finally, cut and remove the rings. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores. Reposition again the joint body all together to the center of the cable joint by seeing the same distance on red PVC tape located on the left and right side of the joint body. Remove all of the PVC tapes from the parking position from the cable joint. Apply half-lapped layers of CP63 thin copper mesh by wrapping it over the joint body, starting from the bending point of the copper wire screen of cable A to the bending point of the copper wire screen of cable B. If there is any leftover length after it reaches the bending point of the copper wire screen of cable B, cut and tie it. Repeat this step on the other two cable cores. Take the constant force spring RF6 out from the armor on cable A. Reapply it at the same position but on top of copper wire screen. Repeat this step on cable B. Bend the copper wire screen on both ends over the constant force spring RF6 towards each other to the center of the cable joint. Cut either wire so that both have equal lengths which meet up with each other. Connect both of them by means of the copper connector for wire screen. Insert both wire screens to the copper connector and crimp using a crimping tool. Fix the copper wire screen over the CP63 thin copper mesh layer by wrapping it with the red PVC tape for a length of 100 mm. Apply the red PVC tape on both sides of cable cores. Repeat this step to the other two cable cores. Use the saw to braid the outer sheath of the cable A for a length of 80 mm on both sides. Repeat this step on cable B. Make O-ring shape from CP64 sealing tape wrapping a half-lapped layer over the perimeter of the outer sheath of cable A at 80 mm from the outer sheath cutting edge with one length of CP64 sealing tape on each side. Protect the two constant four springs RF6 by applying one length of CP64 sealing tape, each wrapped over the constant force spring RF6. Repeat this step on cable B. 
Use CP75 spacer tape and wrap over the entire joint one by one with 50% overlap from the inner edge of the O-ring CP64 sealing tape on one side to the other side of O-ring CP64 sealing tape. Move back in the opposite direction once reaching the cable end until the CP75 spacer tape is finished. Once one CP75 spacer tape is finished, the next one should be placed below the last length of the previous CP75 spacer tape and continue to do this until the last CP75 spacer tape. Then fold it inside the other CP75 spacer tape. Take two injection valves. Place the first injection valve at around 400 mm from the edge of CP75 spacer tape on cable B. Secure the positions of the injection valve by applying an adequate short amount of CP71W restricting tape around it. Place the second injection valve at around 350mm from the first injection valve towards cable A and secure it with CP71W restricting tape as well. Wrap CP71W restricting tape over the entire cable joint with 50% overlap area, fully covering the O-ring CP64 sealing tape at both ends out around 20 mm. Move to the opposite direction if the CP71W restricting tape has covered the whole cable joint in one direction. Wrap CP73 pressure tapes one by one around the whole joint, starting from around 30 mm inside from the outer edge of CP75 spacer tape. Apply with 50% overlap area. Make a vent hole around 30 mm in length, parallel with the direction of the cable joint at around 10 mm from end edge of the CP75 spacer tape on both sides of the cable. To pump the resin, we shall use the resin injection tool, which consists of resin injection bag and resin injection clamp. Twist and turn the resin injection bag around 4 to 5 times onto the injection valve on the side of cable B. Now, we shall prepare all of the cast resin bags. Open the resin bags one by one. To open one bag, tear the external aluminum bag carefully at the tip of the bag so that it does not tear the internal PE bag. When open, we can see there are two liquids inside. These are the resin and the hardener. Take out the black separator at the center of the PE bag and mix both liquids equally and gently around 3 minutes until its color changes to dark grey. Cut one corner of the resin PE bag and fold it in half. Load the bag into the resin injection bag so the cut side enters first. Insert the resin injection clamp onto the resin injection bag and squeeze the resin by rolling the handle part of the resin injection clamp until the resin is fully pumped into the joint. Repeat the step until the air bubble fully flows out from the vent at the side of cable B. Clean any overflow resin, then immediately seal the vent with CP71 restricting tape. Move the resin injection bag to the injection valve at the side of cable A. Keep doing it until the air bubble fully flows out from the vent at the side of cable A. Clean any overflow resin, then immediately seal it with CP71 restricting tape. Wait for a couple of minutes until the resin fully flows to both left and right sides of the cable before we pull out the resin injection bag. After the resin has been injected, do not remove the cable joint and do not backfill for at least 2 hours.